As you know, this is our 40th anniversary, so we're very excited to finally be able to have this after the year's respite of not being able to uh, have it last year. And we have just got an ex amazing group of entertainers that are coming in. A lot of them are new. Over a dozen new performers are, are going to be gracing our stages this year. We also have um, close to 20 new artisans that are going to be a part of the festival this year. So uh, lots of new crafts and art and even demonstrations that are going to be taking place throughout the season. We have got a sword swallower this year, which is not something we've had in a long time. So that should be very interesting. Um, we also have um, uh, acrobats. We have a number of new musicians that are going to be a part of the festival, including two just rocking Scottish bagpipe troops that are going to be uh, alternating throughout the season. So Don Juan and Miguel are looking at their 34th season as part of the festival. So definitely one of our fan favorites. And, you know, we will also have our fire whip master who is now up to 30 Guinness book world record uh, records that he has held or is currently holding. Um, we also have um, our jousting troop, of course, that is returning, and they do three joust, a full combat joust three times a day. We also have um, Zilch the Tory Stellar, and he is also one of our 30 plus year veterans of the festival and continues to be just a just huge fan favorite. And um, if you have not caught his show, he does what is called spoonerisms. So he tells fairy tales in a very unusual manner. <laughs> so it is quite hysterical and uh, it is just a lot of fun to watch. Yes, we have hundreds of amazing artisans. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we are one of the largest outdoor juried craft shows in the country. And what that means is we actually go through a review and jury process to choose the artisans that will be a part of Scarborough so that we do not get, you know, too many of one type of craft and that we can really have, you know, the, the variety that we offer. Also, we require our artisans to have a, at least 80 to 90% of their crafts have to be handmade. We do not allow imports. We do not allow, you know, store-bought items. These have to be handcrafted items that they sell out of their booths. Um, and many of these artisans demonstrate their crafts throughout the day. It's everything from blown glass to glass sculpting to pottery to jewelry making. We have a stone carver that just makes amazing things. Uh, we have jewelers. We have two different candle carving and candle making shops. So just a lot of different types of crafts plus these are the types of crafts that you are not going to see in other craft festivals or craft shows and things like that you see. They're very, very unique. In fact, we have our own pot tapestry shop um, that show, sells these just wonderful woven tapestries. So again, very, very unique art uh, that you will find at Scarborough. Um, the other, you mentioned food. We've got tremendous food. And uh, one of the things that we're very, very proud of is that it's not traditional fair food. We have our own pasta shop that has a variety of different specials every day of the festival day. In fact, he was uh, featured on Carnival East in 2019 for his pasta roses, which are amazing if you ever get the chance to have those. Um, we also have our own bakery that is made from scratch pastries and baked goods every day of the festival day. I mean, he starts at like 3 a.m. baking things fresh every festival day. It's just incredible. But in addition to that, we also have the largest food on a stick selection in Texas. If we can put it on a stick, it goes on a stick. We have everything from chicken to steak to macaroni and cheese to key lime pie and peanut butter pie. So if you can find it on a stick, we have it. We have 20 weddings currently booked for the 2021 season. And uh, so, and, and for those people who don't know, yes, these are real weddings. They take place every festival day. We have a, a licensed officiants who conduct the ceremonies. We have a lovely wedding garden that has roses and a really nice gazebo. And so you have a very, you know, very sweet, uh, beautiful wedding location. Then afterwards, they we have full receptions that take place in our large pavilions. And then once the, the reception's done, people go and get to enjoy the festival day as well. So it's it's a great um, aspect of that. We average anywhere from 20 to 30 weddings every festival season. In addition to that, we have um, big groups that come out. We have birthday parties that come out. And again, we have pavilions and special packages for those folks if they want to do those things. 
Well, you know, last year was so difficult for everyone from top to bottom. I mean, it, it really was a difficult year. And, you know, having lost our 40th season was just a heart-wrenching event for us. But now that we feel like we see the light at the end of the tunnel for this whole COVID pandemic, we feel like we can give people a little bit of hope and a little bit of being really able to just get away from all the difficulties that, that this yet last year has, has shown us. And in a lot of ways, it's an even greater celebration than we would have ever expected last year because we're celebrating coming back and we're celebrating getting through this horrible year and getting through all of the challenges that all of us have faced. And so for us, it's, it's an even greater celebration. And to be able to hit this 40th landmark in spite of all this is just tremendously gratifying doing a lot. And um, that was a big part of our decision to continue and go forward with opening the 2021 season it was making sure that we could protect, you know, not just the patrons, but our participants. We have close to 2,500 participants in the festival. And that's everything from the artisans to the entertainers to our hourly employees that come from all over, you know, Ellis County and beyond. Um, so, the, you know, that was a great responsibility f on our part. And so we have decided to do, we're doing temperature checks for everyone, participants, employees, staff, patrons, everyone will get a temperature check every single day of the festival. We also have, have opted to continue our mask mandate. Um, we feel that is one of the safest ways that we can protect everyone is to require that everyone wear a mask. Uh, of course, there will be exceptions to that for the stage performers who are greater than that six feet of distance where they can be up on the stages and they can be performing without the masks on. But any time that they get close to any of the patrons and once, they can, uh, once their performance is completed, they will be putting masks back on. Um, and again, that we feel that, you know, based on the CDC guidelines, that that is still the safest thing we can do. In addition, we have installed a, a huge number of sanitizing stations throughout the festival site where you can just walk by and grab hand sanitizer as you're enjoying the festival. We have also added a number of hand washing stations that will be strategically placed throughout the festival site. Um, also, we have done a lot of social distancing in our food areas. The tables have been spread apart in a much larger degree to allow for that six foot separation. Our stage areas have also been spaced um, to allow for greater distances. A number of our stages have temporary benches and seating to where we could move those around. Others do not. And so we have um, actually placed barriers so that every other row um, can be used. And so that, again, we can create as much space in between each group of patrons as we possibly can. Of course, our opening weekend is our kids free weekend. So we want folks to know that, you know, uh, all kids 12 and under can get in free up to three kids with each paid adult can get in free. And that's ages five through 12. But kids four and under are always free at the festival. And that's, I think, something very important for those folks that have younger children to know that they can bring them along and they don't have to pay, you know, buy a ticket for them. Um, in addition, our opening weekend is also half price for seniors. So if you're 65 and older, you can come out and you know, show your uh, ID at the uh, at our ticket booth and get your ticket for half price. Um, in addition to that, we have every weekend has a different theme. So just a little bit of a mix and a little bit of a change out um, each weekend. It, everything from our artisan showcase to our Royal Ale Festival to our Legends of the Seas, Live the Fantasy Weekend. The Live the Fantasy, every cosplay person you can imagine comes out for Live the Fantasy Weekend. Um, we also have a Celtic Weekend. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of different things going on. In addition to that, every weekend has a little bit different. Uh, we have some guest artisans that will be coming in and out throughout the season. We also have guest performers that will only be here for a limited time. And all that information can be found on our website. Um, but uh, probably one of the most important things that I want people to know is that there's something for everyone. Um, this is not just an event for families. It's not just an event for people who have kids. It's not just an event for adults. It's if you can, regardless of what your group consists of, you're going to find something wonderful to do. If you like shopping, you can come out and shop all day long and find just amazing treasures throughout the shop, the, the festival. If you have kids and you want a place where they can run around and they can have fun and they can ride rides and things like that, we have got that. In fact, this year we're even introducing a parakeet Avery. And that will be taking place at the festival throughout the season. So uh, lots of, you know, things, again, for everybody, regardless of your age and regardless if you're coming out with a group of adults or you're coming out with just, you know, um, your, your kids and your family, 
everyone's going to find something they enjoy to do. We're one of the few places that everyone has something to do. And it's not just the kids are just bored to tears because it's an event thing or the adults are going crazy because it's all about the kids. So there's just uh, something everyone can enjoy. And we're very proud of that.